It is true. Amen. So we're in Second Peter. Amen. Uh, Pastor, you mind reading for me a little bit this morning? Second Peter. Second Peter. First, uh, yes, that's second. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Let me let me get my notes right here. Yes, First Peter two. Yes, ma'am. First Peter two and one. First Peter two and one. Mm -hmm. Wherefore laying aside all malice mm -hmm. and all guile yes. and all hypocrisy mm -hmm. and envy and, and all evil speaking. Yes. As newborn babes uh -huh. desires. Okay, let's stop there. Y'all might I'm gonna teach just a few minutes, amen. And it's it's not even twelve o'clock, so I have a little time to work with. Amen. But I wanna make sure you get this substance in your belly. Is that all right? I wanna make sure you get the substance. That some of us are coming up against some impending situation, and you need this substance in you, amen, to know how to believe and how to trust the word of God. And he said, therefore, what he said, now let's read it from the beginning. I want you to just read that first verse, and then we'll take the second verse, second verse in peace. What does he say? Wherefore, laying, Wherefore, laying aside now this all is your work. Now, this is this is how I come into, amen. This is my instruction. For walking into the righteousness of God. And he's not coming to, the, to, to condemn us. But he's coming to give us an understanding about the level of separation that it takes amen, between us and the world to say we're even gods. You hear me? The level of separation I've got to come from the world to even say I'm God. That's before he put anything on me. This is just what your obligation. Look at somebody say, it's my obligation. Wow. This is what the Lord required of me to do. And before he'll amen, do what he's going to do. He said, now this is what you do. You got to lay aside all malice. Uh-huh. And all God. And all cussing. Uh-huh. And all hypocrisy. And all your, all your going in and out of God, switching up on God, come up and down, sometimes in, sometimes out. I'm saying today, I'm not saying tomorrow. I believe God today, but I don't believe God tomorrow. He gave me a word and he told me this is my church for the Lord and I'm going to obey God. And then in two weeks later, amen, I don't really know if I can obey God. It's costing me too much to obey God. Amen. That's a hypocrisy. Amen. When God gives you his word, amen, and you start battling in your mind over what the word of God said you start yeah. choosing to believe you over him amen come on amen that's a hypocrisy somebody tell them that's doubling on God that's doubling on God what does he say and envy and your envies uh huh and all evil speaking and all evil now see God is different from evil speaking because amen you gotta get the two you gotta get the two in perspective because God does not just deal with your cursing amen with, with, the, with but God deals with your wrong speaking God deals with your wrong speaking. We talk about that constantly. Amen. And when you're, when you're the righteous, you cannot, amen, just say anything out of your mouth. Amen. When you, when you walk with the authority of God, you got to understand that what comes out of your mouth is established by one or two spirits. Amen. Either the kingdom establishes your word or Satan uses your word, amen, to become your rebuke later. Amen. So you got to understand, whatever comes out of my mouth is not just word. Amen. The Bible says the words that we speak, they are spirit and they are life. Even if they are wrong, spirit, amen, it creates something in the atmosphere around you, amen, when you speak it. So you can't just say, I said something, amen, and move on and laugh it off and say, well, you know, that's why when you say certain things, even jokingly, you got to rebuke the spirit of it out of the air, because what you say in a jester, come on somebody, will still come to pass on somebody. Amen, that's why you can't just let your words, amen, seem like they're nothing, because our words are spirit and they are what? Life. Amen, so whatever you speak, it gets light cell. Come on, so I didn't get a heartbeat, amen, and it becomes what you say. That's why a lot of the mess that we end up in, it's not because somebody did it to us, it's because we spoke it over our own life and when God was trying to get you to change your language, you didn't believe what God said because you were trying to do what you were trying to do. And he said that to me. He said a lot of things that we're hooked in is because we spoke ourselves in. Oh God. Wow. Our own desire brought us into some condemnations. Our own desires brought us into some circumstances that now we wish we would have never opened the door. Yes. Amen. Come on, parents told us time and time.
time to get big if you can hold out. Wait. Come on, somebody. Don't give God. Come on, somebody. Your virginity. Wait on your husband. Amen. But because we didn't want to wait, because, come on, that heat got too hot. Come on, somebody. And that desire overcame us. We decided we weren't going to wait. We was going to give it to somebody that was cute. Come on, somebody with bow legs. <laughs> And although you were saying in your mind, wait, wait, wait. Yes. When you when you open the door, see it's not about, I'm not trying to be vocal today. Amen. It's not about opening legs. It's about opening doors. Mm -hmm. Because there's some things once you open the doors, the legs open automatically. That's it. Say that. It's the truth. If you let a thief in, you can't say, you know what, I changed my mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's gonna steal something. <laughs> once he in, he in the steal. You can say, you know, I'm changing my mind. Don't come tonight. Come, you know, two weeks when I'm not here. Then in case you want to kill somebody, I won't be here. Mm -hmm. Now, once you let that thief in, he has rulership. The Bible says that's why you got to be careful who you yield your member's servants to. Yeah. Because whomever you yield your member's servants to, there you have to obey. You can't let it in and then decide you don't want it. Because, amen, the spirit that calls you to open the door is the spirit that rules. So here we are as the, uh, uh, becoming the righteousness of God. So when we begin to look at it, he said, you got to put away all this, all these things. You got to put away the malice. You got to put away, amen, the envy. You got to put away, amen, the evil speaking. And you got to put away the God. What does he say? As newborn babes. As newborn babes, uh-huh. Desire the sense Now he said, now this is the process to my righteousness. And in the process of my righteousness, he said, after you deal with these things, uh -huh. then you're going to get what we, what he calls now a desire. Yes. Amen. And many of us, oh, help us today. Yes, Amen. God. Many of us, Holy Ghost, help us teach this that many of us don't really want God because our desire, amen, is not after God. Our desire out for the things that you've not killed. That malice, that envy, that pride, that come on somebody, that over desire, amen, that over that overachievers mentality, amen, that won't allow us to believe God because I'm an overachiever and I can't see it tangibly. I can't believe, amen, that it really is. And most of the time, it's our own mind and our own thinking that keeps us out of faith. Yes. Somebody say, your mind keeping you out of faith. Your mind keeping you out of faith. And many times God said, I want to do it so you can believe me, but I can't do it because you really don't believe me. Amen. You believe me as long as I'm putting it out. Amen. You believe me as long as the check's coming in. But it's hard when I move the check and say, now just trust me. Amen. And you keep saying, no, God, I can't trust that because my bill coming up. I can't trust that because my condo coming up. I can't trust that because the light bill sitting right in front of me. And I don't know how that's going to be paid. Amen. But then somehow God, by his grace and his mercy, will sometime allow somebody to step in and bless you just to show you that if you can build a life of trusting God, favor is greater than your money. Favor is greater than your mind. Favor is greater than even your faith. Yes, yes, yes. But you got to release yourself into a place where you trust God and the only way you can release yourself to a place to trust God is you first got to believe who he's called you to be. He said, now, I'm going to give you he said, your desire is going to grow once you kill the thing that hinders desire. Your desire is, grow, is going to grow once you kill the thing that hinders desire. And most of the time, it's something you're up against. The reason why you can't believe God, the reason why you can't live for God, the reason why you don't want his word when the word is coming forth, you're struggling with what part of that you don't really believe because somewhere in there, there is some devilish sensing or something that we're involved in that's cutting off, amen, the seed that's trying to go down in your spirit. He said, I can't go down because of the condition of your heart to believe me. And somebody said, desire. Desire. You have a desire, even if your desire is to please God or to please you. Some have a selfish desire. But your desire is the place where God deals. Let's, 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 let's come down to what it comes down to. So tell your desire is the place where God deals with it. He said, I can't even get in that until you desire me. Because I don't force myself on nobody. If I force myself on you, then I'm in rape. Come on, somebody. He said, I'm not going to force myself. you got to first have a desire. He said, yeah, and I can't work with it. Because you say, you know, I really want to. God, for something. You know, I'm struggling. You know, we, you know, and if I take that, then so-and-so going to leave me. And I know, you know, and I just really feel like that's the one that you got for me. So I just, you know, My and God. so, you know, but, but if you tell me to go to church, they don't really want to go to church. And so, you know, I just, you 
you know, I just don't go because I, you know, because he paying all the bills. You know what I'm supposed to do. Amen. And see, your desire for God gets killed. Amen. Because you, you desire something greater than you desire God. Amen. And y'all, let me help y'all sometimes. Let me help the, the deep people. Because it's easy for us to talk about the folk in the world, but it's the folk in the church that miss God so many times. Amen. Because sometimes we so deep in believing God and God speaking one thing, but your spirit, come on, you're deeply prophetic and apostolic self. Amen. Come on, somebody. You can't even see God for seeing you in your ability. Amen. You can't believe God for nothing unless you dreamed it and prophesied it. Come on. Amen. And so many times we in the church and we so deep, man, and God speaking something so simple. Amen. But we looking for something so deep in the metals and I had a dream and I was down under the leaves was blowing over me. Amen. And then I said, I fell in a hole. When I came out the hole, I was looking at a palace and the Lord was saying, he take me from the pit to the palace. Amen. Come on, somebody. We can't believe nothing unless it come in something deep or something. Come on, somebody. It's something crazy. And that's why people look at the church and think we're schizophrenic because we're deep in revelation but broke in our pockets. Come on. Amen. And people be like, well, what is it? What is your faith? What is your the Holy Ghost begin to tell me? He said, you know why? He said, your righteousness is not in a place. Amen. Where I can give you what you're asking me for. He said, you want my stuff without wanting me and I don't have it out that way. He said, in order for you to get what I have, you got to do what I say. Amen. And it's not your level of belief. It's your level of obedience. And many of us, amen, we believe but we're just not obedient. Amen. So God said, I want to bless you, but I can't bless you because all you said is, I'm going to, I got it. It's mine. It's mine. And he said, now where's the word on that promise? If you can't call back to me what I said, then you can't have what you're asking for. Oh my mm. God. You teaching now. Too many of us are saying the Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said. And we don't have a prayer life, don't have a word life, don't live nothing, don't walk nothing, don't talk nothing. Don't nobody even know you really sing other than you sing in a choir. Good and we got to get the church beyond. Let me tell y'all something. The enemy is coming in our churches and destroying us. And literally the scripture is coming to light to us that our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Even if we're sitting in the church and our discernment is off, we sing in the church, come on somebody, we don't have no praise, we don't have no, come on, no desire, we don't have no righteousness, but when something happens, we say, oh, I don't believe that happened in the church. Why not? Amen, come on somebody, why wouldn't it happen in the church? I said, my spirit ain't there, come on somebody, it can happen in the church. And what God is trying to present is he's trying to present a people that will believe him, a people that trust him, a people that walk in God, amen, and have a standard. Amen, let me tell you up. These days are not going to get better. These, at least not for in, in the world. Amen. But for those of that are in God, we don't have to walk in fear because he's already told us of the times and of the seasons that will come. Now you let your praise yourself after God that already told you what's getting ready to come. And you sit there and say, well, I, you know, it might not be for me. It might be God living for me to die here. Amen. Just die in that. Come on. Well, you sit there praising. Amen. But the Bible said he would and no, well, come on, no harm will come upon you. He said, I'll show you the scheme of the enemy even before it comes. So God's showing you why are you going to sit there and say, amen, he want me to die? Why die prematurely, amen, when God told you how you can live? Yes. I'm going to live. I'm going to live. So he said, now, desire, after you put away these things, desire. What does he say? Desire the sincere milk. Desire the sincere milk. Desire, look at somebody say, desire that which is sincere. Desire that which is sincere. See, one thing I look at in the condition of the church is we connect with, hang with, talk to, hang around folk who are as simple in their walk with God as we are. Wow. We will not connect ourselves to someone who is who is who has a greater sincerity uh -huh. in God than we do. We rather talk to somebody that agree with our condition. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I know what the church say, but I, you know, you know, I just, you know. All this stuff about the church, you know, I you know, I just don't trust the church like that no more. You know, I would, you know, if I was you, I would, you know, I would just be, you know, I'll do my own thing. Cause I'm, you know, I tell God, I say the devil, you come on, you a slew foot lie. Come on, somebody, you connect to some old faithless wonder. Come on, somebody who ain't who don't have a hope in God. They're trying to tell you how to walk in God. That's why many of us are backsliding. Amen. Because you're trying to listen to somebody who don't know God. How you going to speak God into me and you don't even believe what yes. you say? Yes. My God. How you going to speak God for me to go to another level? Amen. Come on, somebody. You ain't reaching for that level. Come on. And so, yeah, when it comes to your counsel, the Bible says, come on. He said, not sit in, not, don't sit in the counsel of the ungodly. Amen. Why would you sit in the counsel of somebody who don't have God? 
but you are the righteous. Mm -mm. He said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. No sit, now let me help you with this. This might take me off course for just a second. No sit in the seat of the scornful. So what happens to us is we get around people and you say, well, I'm getting ready. The Lord has told me to make a transition to Atlanta. And then you get around people that say, girl, if I was you, I'm telling you, I just don't believe all that, you know. I could be saved from right where I am. I just don't believe God got to take me all the way to Atlanta. To do, do you know that? I just don't believe God to do that. He said his church is right here. And why God got to tell you already? You're already doing bad. How you going to do better if you go somewhere else? And now you, you guess where you're going? First, you're talking to somebody who don't believe God who ain't going to never go nowhere. And secondly, you're being scorned by them. Because now what the enemy going to do is wear you out. And all of a sudden, you went there with great faith. By the time you leave there, you're thinking to yourself, yeah, you know, she's right. You know, at least here, I got housing. Oh, God. My God. At least here, you know, I get the stamps and stuff. Jesus. And the Medicaid. And my children got to have this Medicaid. If I leave there, because my child can't go one week without her medicine. So, you know, if I go there, you know, we got to do all that over again. And here go that, you know, that spirit, uh -huh. that same spirit that was speaking in. Now it's got your mind thinking. And you walked in with great faith, thought you was going to turn them. And you know, by the time oh, you no. leave, they done turned you. Yeah. They said, you know, you know, I, you know I'm just let pass it I'm, like, I'm probably not going to make it, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm just thinking this. You know, they can do that because they got such and such and they got people and they got this. You don't even know. Every last one of us are on a level of faith to walk away from yes. something. It's taking a level of sacrifice. Like, I don't, I don't know. Are you crazy? Amen. All of us, even even be saved, are having to say no to some demon. Amen. That we have trusted in for life. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Amen. Come on, when you done been sexed all your life and you gotta walk in the church and hear them tell you now you can't have no boyfriend and you can't lay up, come on somebody, and you gotta suffer and all this flesh you feeling and all of these hormones racing. Come on, somebody, your mind say do it, your desires kicking in the midnight hour. They talk about pray, they talk about pray, yeah. You'll get mad. When folk talk about pray too. I don't want to pray. I'm tired of praying. I don't want to hear prayer. You pray. I'm not praying no more. I'm going to get me some. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I don't want to hear nothing about prayer. You know, in your circumstance, I'm talking about the authority uh, that we want because your circumstance to the child will get so hard to a point where sometimes you'll start questioning God. Oh, God. I, don't, I just don't know if I believe it. Come on. But why would he let me? Why you know? Why would he let me go through this? Why, why would he put me in this situation? And he know that you know he know how I am. Why would he put me in this? And he already know. Why would he even give me somebody? And look for me. You know he know I'm gonna fall. He know if you put him there, I'm gonna sleep with him. He know. You know why would you even do that? Because he said I thought that I could trust you enough to be in the world, but not of the world. I thought that I could trust that you have sense enough to know. Amen. The way of the righteous. Come on, somebody. Y'all better say something again. I thought you have sense enough to know. Amen. That I gotta have. Power over the power of the enemy. Whoa. We don't have that level. Oh God. Yet. Jesus. Any battles with even our level That's of belief? Good. Questioning. Me and me and me and brother Jim were talking about the other day. I said, man, I don't have that. I, I, I said, boy, sometimes this thing gets so difficult to sometimes I say to myself, God, mm. whoo. Mm. Is you there? Hello. <laughs> is you knocking? Come on. What he says, what does he say? That ye may grow thereby. Uh, study. Somebody say, I'm stunned. Study. My growth is hindered. Yeah. Why is my growth hindered? Now, I got to, this, this is going to help you. I'm going to move, move through it now. I mean, this is what's going to help you. My growth is hindered because I don't have sincerity of the word. Mm. Wow. My growth is hindered because I what? Don't spend enough time yes. in the word. Yes. If I told you that the map to your to the map to your delivery was in a book. And if you read the book, you'll end up at success. Well, a lot of us gonna have a problem. I was sharing with I was sharing with with, 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 with um with, with Boo the other day. I was sharing with Sister Shaman's daughter. I was sharing the other day. I said, you know, I got this little book for my for my class. And then she looked at it, you know, the hub. Of course, hub, because she read books in the day. But as she looked at the book, she said, this book ain't even that much pages. <laughs> <laughs> this little book ain't got no pages. Yo, you can't read this book. I read, it took me three days to get through the first chapter. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> chapter five, <laughs> 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 The 
the chapter was five pages. But I was falling asleep. Every time I started reading, they were big words. It ain't like whole pages. It ain't like small words like in the Bible. I could read the Bible and won't even fall asleep. But I would look at this book and I start looking at the head. You know, you put it all together, they probably really half a page and they squished the lines up a little bit. And <laughs> it took me a day. What the? I was sitting there falling asleep. He'd he be like, you gonna read that book? The book be hanging right there. <laughs> I said, this ain't nothing. This ain't because I have a desire. The enemy's job is look, I'm not gonna give you enough in your in your spirit, amen, to even desire to get better. The enemy will have us so messed up that we'll see our condition and have the book to make it better, but won't even read the instruction to know how to change your own life. Why sit there and die with the book before you to help you to live and you won't even read it? Yes. God, it's something about our generation yes. that we won't get enough information to change our own life. We rather really depend on that. Listen, I'm not trying to tell you, amen, that, that, that housing and, and food stamps and those things are not good, but they're good for a season. Yes. You should not build your dependency and your, and your the rest of your life on having assistance. The devil is a liar. Not when Obama said you can pay off your school and go right back now. Not with all the programs in the world that'll help you. Come on, somebody. I don't care what the enemy has said. You got to make up in your mind. This is not my ultimate end. This is not how God designed for my life to be. He didn't design for me to work, come on, 60 hours a week, amen. Come on, just to pay for a car in the house. The devil is a liar. Amen. There's something greater for my life. Amen. But you will never know greater if you don't get a desire. And once you get a desire, Desire, it's got to be sincere. Tell somebody, yeah. give me some. I need some sincere. I need people that ain't playing games. I need people, amen. Yeah. Come on, somebody that's going to make me accountable, amen, to what the word of God said. And what's wrong with most of us is we're around too many people who won't make us accountable to the word of God. Everybody, yes, sir, no, sir. Everybody like you. Everybody geeked up on your gift and your talent. So they won't make you get somewhere and get in the word. Maybe you need to pray, amen, and stop having sex with everybody. Oh amen. Come on, somebody. Somebody need to make you upset with yourself. Amen. So you can make yourself better. Jesus. If everybody around you, amen, are your buddy, amen, then you got the wrong group of people. You need somebody to tell you the truth. You need to stop going to sleep, get up, get in that book, finish that program so you can be better. Amen. Yes, sir. Everybody around this thing, girl, I wouldn't need them. What? You're going to give up your food stamps, huh? I mean, well, I just went and report it. Now, you're going to be in jail right with them. Come on, exactly. praise the <laughs> No, you over the limit and you ain't reporting your money. And them folks come down on you now. now you you got to pay them out of your child support somebody giving you. It was about you already getting but a hundred. Come on, somebody, you got to pay somebody 50 of that. You crazy. I ain't doing nothing criminal. Amen. The hit the hit of come on. I'm telling you now. I ain't got time to be sitting up in nobody. I'll be in the wall, my people run around. I got some food stamps and say, well, you keep yours and you go on down there. Because anybody can be listening to us right now, and I got your car. Come on, somebody be you going to jail and me too. The devil is a liar. Come on, somebody, you gotta have sense enough to know. Listen, this is not the this is not the course for my life. Let me help us just a few more minutes. What does he say? It, it, if so be ye have uh -huh. tasted that the Lord is gracious. If you have ever tasted the Lord is gracious, uh -huh. to whom coming. Okay, let's stop. Let me hold it right there for a moment. The Bible, this is what the Lord gave to this point. He said, The righteousness of God, one of the most prominent attributes of God in the scriptures, is also one of the most exclusive. Amen. The righteousness of God is synonymous with justice. And so when we begin, when the Holy Spirit began to have me to dig this out, amen, I want to help us. He said, now, the righteousness of God is synonymous with the justice of God. In the Old Testament, we see the righteousness of God synonymous with justice. In the New Testament, it's with equality. And so when we look at the righteousness of God according to the Old Testament, we look at the justice of God, amen, the right doing of God, the righteous judge, amen, that if you sin, you die. Amen. But then we see the then we see the God, amen, over in the New Testament, who's the God of grace, who says that now I'm going to grace you to come out of what you're in. Amen. Because I want to give everybody an equal playing field. Amen. You all ain't going to do it right. Amen. So I'm going to put on this flesh so I can understand why you won't act right. Then I'm going to go through this flesh and then I'm going to get the power over the flesh and then I'm going to put all that I just gained, amen, in the power of them and I'm going to take it and put it in a spirit called the Holy Ghost. And then I'm going to put 
that spirit in you. Now you're gonna be challenged, but if you would if you would if, if, if receive it and you would obey it, amen, then you won't have to live in the flesh to fulfill the lust, what thereof. Oh my God. Amen. And so what he says. He takes the two. He takes it from the prominence of justice in the Old Testament and the prominence of equality in the New Testament. And the most common Old Testament word for just means straight. Somebody say straight. straight. Amen. The word just means straight. Amen. So he goes from straight, come on somebody, and equal. Amen. So in the New Testament is equal or a moral sense. They mean right. And so what the Lord began to say is, in the New Testament, what is equal, what simply means he's making it right. And so what he's doing is taking just and equal and saying, now this is straight right. Oh, Amen. So we see, so we see Saul on the horse. To exemplify his word. We see Saul riding his horse on his way, what? To destroy some folk in the name of the Lord. Amen. But what happens to Saul on his way to the mess? He gets knocked off of his beast. Amen. And the Bible said, Amen. He knocks him off. Amen. And we get, he blinds him. And for three days, he's in derision. And he runs into a prophet, and the prophet, Amen, straightens him out. And all of a sudden, he no longer sees the confusion when his eyes are open, his mind is changed. He got time to deal with that. When his eyes are open, his mind is changed. Amen. But it puts him on, it knocks him off a crooked path onto a straight path. It gets him right. Look at somebody say, You're going to get right. When we say get right, we don't mean, amen, we don't mean, amen, we don't mean as in, amen, somebody going to whip you or abuse you. He said, no, I'm going to deal with your mind. I'm going to give you justice in your mind. I'm going to make, I'm going to give the reason of your mind through the sincerity of the word. This, this is how transformation happens. It does not happen because you pray. No, 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 no. The transition of your mind, the transforming of your mind come by the word of God, the washing of the word because if the word don't ever wash your mind you're going to think the same way constantly Come on, yes. that's why we got to have a relationship with the sincere yes. milk you can't even get deep revelation you got to get this simple stuff oh, God. the sincerity of the milk is for the washing of your mind I want to give you just I want to teach you how to do just yes, I want to teach you how to walk straight and too many of us too many of us are not doing just too many of us are not straight. We crooked. We do right for a season. We do right for a day. But you're consumed by your desire. It's not transformed by the power of the word. When we say that God is, when we say that God is, we're saying, when we say that God is righteous. We're saying that He always does what is right. He does it consistently. And this is what the Lord said. He said, you gotta, when you're when you're developing. A spirit because we get ready to talk. We're going to go, we get ready to get this imputed righteousness in just a moment, but we got to develop. The, we got listen. You got to walk to a place that he imputes the righteousness. Mm. So we, this is what this is the walk. This is the procedure. Okay. And so here he says, listen. I got to get you clean enough for me to put it in you. Clean enough for me to lay it on you. So here, here it is. They're walking, and he's saying, now I gotta get you right. I gotta get your mind to see what is just and what is straight. No bisexual. Straight. You hear me? Straight. No, I think he'll do it this way. I, you know, I just don't see nothing wrong with it. Straight. Mm. You got to become so straight. This is what he said to me this morning. He said, you got to become so straight in me that you don't have a desire for nothing out of me. Your walls become your boundaries spiritually. What's wrong with a lot of us is we don't have spiritual boundaries. We don't have spiritual walls. We do anything. And as long as we go to church, we're all right. Sinning and constantly repenting does not make you say. Yes. Come on. <laughs> say so. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Mm -hmm. God forbid. How can ye that are dead to sin? Dead means no response. The reason why we fall is because we give it response. Yes. Give me something I say, don't respond. Don't respond. Oh, help us. <laughs> help us. Don't respond. I know we're not hooping. Oh, this but I'm giving understanding. Don't respond. 
Like somebody call you talking crazy. Girl, your man was with my your man was with my girlfriend the other night. I'm telling you, girl, you better go do something about her. You need to go, you need to go break her off. And she was, I saw all the his face and smiling and all this stuff. And he you is your crazy self getting all riled up by something. Somebody called you and said that you carry your crazy self across the come on highway to my going to fight somebody. Because somebody said you don't respond to craziness. First of all, he ain't yours if ain't no rain on it. Look how quiet that is. See how quiet that is? Mm -hmm. You ready to go fight over something that's fair game? I say so. Wow. And because he's telling you he loves you and he hitting it a few times, that don't make him yours. That just make you one of the ones. Mm -hmm. He's still searching. He's still in the search. Yes. <laughs> if he, if you, <laughs> well, we, we exclusive. <laughs> Well, if, he ain't, if, if he ain't committed to you, Say so. come on, if he ain't looking at your face, if he ain't calling your phone, come on somebody, if he ain't saving people with the Holy Ghost, and I'm talking about all the way, tried, proven, and true, it ain't yours. He yours and a few others. If you out there fighting looking crazy, you're going to be fighting through a whole lot of sisters by the time you find out that he ain't really committed to you or her. What you gonna do? Every night somebody calls you and say he crossed the street, you gonna go across there and fight them too? Only to look crazy. And you even you look even dumb because he don't even try to break up the fight to tell you he loves you. He <laughs> lets you fight and you end up in jail and he over there the next sister house. Hello. You looking crazy. That's true. You ain't gonna even come pay my bail money. Righteous. He said it's got to become a consistent behavior. Somebody said consistent behavior. He told me this morning, he said you got to do something consistently in order to see an expected result. And the thing that we do most of the time is if we don't do anything consistently. We'll pray today, then three days later pray again, then four days later pray again, and then ooh, I thought about, I forgot I didn't pray, I forgot about prayer. Amen. So we don't pray for a while, and that's why we feel spiritual. Mm -mm. He tell you the most spiritual height of your life is after you fall. Once you fall, you feel so close to God. You yeah. <laughs> oh yes. I'm telling you, you talk about pray. I'm telling you, after you fall, you pray. You, you can go in. Ooh, that's that condemnation. Yes. <laughs> it's called conviction. The spirit come upon you to tell you you're wrong. And it's good that he draw you to prayer because anytime you don't feel that any longer, you're on your way to hell. Anytime you sin and it don't bother you to do it any longer, you're on your way to hell. Anytime you can sin and you can get up and go do it again tomorrow and then you can go do it again the next day and then you go come on pull it together and work out how you're going to do it two days later. We might not be able to see each other later. We're going to go to the hotel next week and we'll meet up. We do. Then you already know you're on your way to a reprobate mind. Come on somebody. And then the opportunity most likely for you to come back is least to none because eventually he turns you over to that which you love more than him. Yes, right. And then once you can say no too easily, now you are bound by it. Come on. You're teaching good you can't get out if you want to. If you want to. It comes down to you, he tells us, I got, a, 